Welcome, everybody, to the next edition of the Golden Fox Podcast. You'll have to excuse um, any any particular laughter we're holding before we got started. Um, joining with me are two loyal people so far, Riley Percival Miller. Hello. And Wolfhead. Hello there, chat. Um, just a quick, uh, just a quick little trivia. Wolfhead's microphone is still acting like shit, or his internet. Is. Yes, it very much is. It's yeah. it's a Discord problem. It's not a, it's not a, it's not an internet. Have you tried updating Discord? Many times, and it still does Ugh. stupid shit. Oh, like la- like like anything. last time I was running a stream, which was the other day. Um, I'm trying to communicate, and then I hear Brett. We didn't hear you what you said. I'm like, God, fucking damn it, man. <laughs> It's like, seriously, Discord, get your shit together, man. I know that you say that there's no fun in making sense, but you gotta, like... What fun in there is making sense? Exactly. So how else have you guys been? I have been pretty well. Good, I got the next two days off, so I'm gonna enjoy it. Okay, good. You gonna go and get stoned? I mean, I... That's definitely a yes. <laughs> Let's go. If you ask somebody a question and they answer like, "I mean, uh, yeah," <laughs> chat. That's how you know if someone's full of shit. If you ask them a question and they go, "I mean," dot dot dot, and then they just trail off. <laughs> 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 Ch- I think I think I should tell chat this. I ordered another microphone. The fourth microphone within a course of one year. I honestly don't think it's your microphone. I think it's just your internet. It's, no, this is not a Discord, Discord problem. Discord, dude. Like, I'm not know. ordering it to like fix my Discord. I'm ordering it to have like a, a good microphone. I like the oh, microphone okay. I have right now. It doesn't have a mute button so i ordered one with a mute button nice that's uh, all that's it yeah so it's uh what is it a yeti microphone or something dude it is my third yeti oh wow Everybody like the two other yeti. yetis just fucking broke <laughs> so <laughs> indication that i should probably stop buying yetis but i'm gonna say if they've broken twice before that might be a bad sign yeah Using now is a is a Rode microphone. I think I'm saying that right. But yeah, I'm gonna get a um the Blue Yeti X, and it has pretty lights on it because my brain is attracted to the to to lights. Apparently, <laughs> microphone, and now I'm gonna get it, and it's gonna come on Monday. So that's the thing. Yep. So, look at this getting... graph. <laughs> look at this graph. Shut up, both of you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Riley's about ready to go home and get stoned. Is that an actual song? Yes, that's a Hinder song. Oh. Here we are Here we are sitting here talking about fucking, like, what people call butt rock. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Look at this fucking shit. Wouldn't that be like, yeah, that would be Nickelback and maybe a little bit of Creed mixed in? Ugh, Creed. Like, Creed's got too much of the. Like, I don't. This is definitely going to, like, open a can of worms. Um, they rely too much on Christian themes, which in contrast is even more. Christian I mean, than the what name actually... is Creed. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to, like, other bands who are more Christian rock, which. You know, funny enough, I don't mind. Like, I'll listen to Skillet, I'll listen to Rad, I'll listen to P.O.D. But the the stuff that Creed was singing about is so in your face, it's like, oh, dear God, dude, you might as well just preach at a choir. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, find a Christian church and play a set there. With arms wide open. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. 
<laughs> is gonna change. We're singing like two different Creed songs right now. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> All right, you can, do a, you can do a stellar Goofy though. Well, thank you, there, Mister Wolfhead. Oh, yep. God, that's creepy as all hell. Don't ever do that. Absolutely fucking creepy. Wolf Never do that again. Wolfham, you're having a fun time. <laughs> yep. Well, speaking Can of you Dis say golden... Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, speaking of Disney, I think it's time we moved on to the first of the three topics. Oh, yes. That uh, very controversial subject. <laughs> we it's not even controversial. It's, uh, it it's, it's something that definitely you know, raises arms. So yeah, um, the latest uh, Frozen trailer was out, and for a while, I've been kind of like, I've been kind of like, silent about the whole thing, like I didn't really think too much about it. Until I get to my part, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go first, starting with Riley. Honestly, the thing that gets keeps getting me about this trailer is that it's completely throwing me off from the first film. I mean, you look at the marketing for this film versus when Frozen came out back in 2013, it's like night and day. Like, F Frozen, for all its faults, it, like, for all its good things, the marketing for Frozen was garbage. Like, they just kept showing off Olaf and, and uh, was it Sven, the, the deer, in all the commercials and trailers for it? Yeah. And that was... And when I actually watched it in theaters, I'm like, ah, oh, new Disney film, I'll see it. And I really liked it. I'm like, oh, I hope this go this does well. <laughs> oh, you wished it way too well, my friend. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And then it uh, grossed over a billion dollars in the box office. <laughs> and all that let it go singing from all over the web will never oh, leave my your goddamn head. A friend oh of mine was God, working God. as a was working at a camp counselor the summer afterwards, and they had like a talent show, and most of the kids said let it sang let it go, oh, and God. he never oh, wanted to hear God. that song again. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you just imagine you're at some like talent show at a summer camp, and all these kids trying to sing let it go. <laughs> Wouldn't wish that on my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's like I'm I'm definitely interested in seeing what they're doing with this film. It's yeah. just it's it, it like throws me off every time I see a trailer. I'm not I'm not sure what to expect from it. Is it gonna have like the same musical tone as the first? I'm not getting that vibe from it. I'm but I'm definitely interested in seeing it and see what they do with it. I think yeah, I think that's the 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 funny thing about trailers is that they kind of you know they would somewhat leave you in, leave you in the loop or give you an impression of what's this going to be or what's that going to be, um, and as far as Let It Go is concerned, yeah, it's a song that nobody likes to talk about, but there is I'm going to go ahead and put a pin on that topic when it comes to my turn because I don't want to you know take up the whole space. Uh, anything else you want to share, Riley? Um, well it. It's funny, like the uh, it's hot. It looks like they have like kelpies and stuff into it, which is surprising because I thought kelpies were more like Scottish and such rather than like was that Scandinavian. This is supposed to be taking place in basically hmm. Scandinavia. So I'm I'm interested in what the lore is from this, what 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 they're taking from it, because this is based all on the Snow Queen. And so this is all brand new stuff since there's never been really a sequel to the Snow Queen before, as far as I know. So, <laughs> like I said, I have no idea what the make of the film, but I'm I'm just so curious about what it's going to be like that I can't help myself from going to see it. Either either way, I still like the first one. Okay, <clears throat> Wolf Head, you're up. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. There. They sh I saw both trailers. I saw the trailer where Elsa was trying to, like, run across the ocean. Yeah, I remember that. And she kept yeah. getting annihilated by the waves. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I was the only one who thought that was funny. Because, like, everybody else who saw it was like, she's, she's on where to go and then when she gets annihilated, I'm just like, you dumb bitch, this isn't going to work. So, um, anyway, uh, the new trailer I saw owes us a lot more, but I still don't know what direction they're going to go in it. Go with right? it. Exactly. Right? <laughs> be anything. You know what exactly. I think? Exactly. 
You know what I think? I don't think their parents are dead. I have a feeling. Like, I don't think their parents are like dead. It's I think be on some journey to go find they're... their parents or something. Dude, if that yeah. was, like, that would probably be one of the most, like, one of the most, like, I wouldn't say controversial twists, but it'd definitely be a twist that I'd be open to because almost every Disney movie, they have dead parental figures. Mm -hmm. No joke. It, it's it's a constant trope. And if they're going to try to break away from that, I don't know how they're going to work with it. Like, uh, like Pixar doesn't count, obviously, because finding Nori, Dory's parents were actually alive the whole time. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sorry for um, sorry if you were gonna watch Finding Dory tonight. <laughs> Golden just ruined it for everybody. <laughs> Golden, how could you, you monster? <laughs> you monster. But no, like if Disney does something like that, like oh wow, and it'll be like, you fucking assholes, where were you this whole time while Elsa was dealing with her frozen power shit? There's there's two things I think happen in frozen 2 one it's going to be the source of elsa's powers that part seems to be evident and i think they're just going to focus more parents or like the, the movie is going to have some sort of like message of like purpose or what you're like supposed to be or something like that or like an explanation of where elsa's powers came from yeah 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 that's that's what i think that's all that's it that's it out of me hmm so that's all you have to say about the uh, trailer so far? Yeah. Okay, so to get my thoughts on this, I was very skeptical when I found out that there would be a sequel. Like, you're making a sequel to the theatrical release, and a theatrical sequel, no less. Now, I'm not saying that this is the first time Disney made a sequel that would come out in theaters. Um, there have been Disney sequels that were out in theaters before. There was The Rescuers Down Under... And oh. there was recently the Ralph Breaks the Internet, which I thought was okay. Bruh, Wreck it, it was Ralph, just, Wreck it Ralph it was, was, just was much better. Okay. Yeah, um, but with Frozen, the first Wreck It Ralph, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, but um, what was I going to say? The first Frozen. The the funny story behind that is is that I kind of avoided seeing it in theaters. Like I kind of forgot about it. I know that it you know, was originally going to be a hand-drawn animated movie, but there was, you know, the fiasco of what Bob Iger did. Fuck you, Iger. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. I, I, I then had access to seeing it with um, uh, somebody, and we were watching it together, and I'm like, huh. They actually did some different nice twists and turns. Like, you know, Elsa was the one character I enjoyed the most, because, like... Obviously, during the first movie, she's trying to get control of her freezing powers, and she doesn't want to, you know, let loose. And then she lets loose, and then she causes an accident, and then she runs away, and there's that Sorcery. Song, there's that song that will never leave her head. And, you know, I think I should take the pin off what of that. What song, Golden? What song? Let it fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Both forgetting about you the You know, song the cold never bothered her anyway. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And she has frozen fragments all around. No, if you want frozen to talk about, like, water. okay, so everybody says that Let It Go is a very overplayed song. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to argue with that. It drives me crazy. But if there's any song that I legit cannot stand from this uh, from the first movie, it's not Let It Go, but the fucking troll song. There was a scene where Elsa's um, Elsa's sister uh, Anna, her name was Anna. Her name is uh, Anna. Anna, yeah. Anna. She she got wounded. She she accidentally had like a part of her heart frozen by Elsa, and it was all just an accident. And they're trying to find help, and they go to run into these trolls who have the possibility of helping her. And they're spending their time making a fucking song about how her and that other guy that she met could be a good like a good relationship. And they're just going off for a couple of minutes. I'm like, dude, if her fucking arm was cut off, would you even care? Mm. Like, yeah, all about I get, that. yeah, no, it's like, I, I get it. Like, they didn't know at first until after the song they noticed it. But, like, dude, they're trying to get your attention and get you to listen. And you're spending your time thinking, oh, these two are made for each other. Let's make a song about it. No, just no. I hated that song because it was so, so inappropriate with the place. It just, it drove me nuts. It was literally everywhere you went. 
Yeah, no, Take like away I, I, you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I would rather I'd rather deal with Let It Go than deal with that stupid <laughs> troll song in contrast. No joke. Mm. I'll just uh, jot that down for later in my memory banks. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. But, <laughs> but no, um, as far as the sequel goes, like the closest impression that I had, like I remember hearing about Frozen 2 for years until, you know, up to this year. And the, oh, the, yeah, it was basically in development. Like we knew f- right from like 2014, 2015, there was going to be a sequel. That, like it, there were even there was even talk about it during 2014, like sometime after uh, Frozen came out, um, and the the closest I can think of that would potentially work is that you know they would just explain the origins of where Elsa got her magic uh, abilities from, you know, to summon you know all kinds of snow and ice. Yeah. Yeah. Although a part of me, like, it would have been a hilarious joke if she encountered somebody who was able to, like, conjure fire and the other one's able to control water. <clears throat> um, what's her name from Moana? Oh, yeah, Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go! Way to go! Imagine if Anna got fire powers. You are an idiot! Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> that girl's name from Moana! <laughs> Moana. I was like, what's the name of the girl from Moana? Oh, wait, it's Moana. (laughs) But no, um, like, she's got, like, she's she's friends with this uh, ocean that controls anything around her. Um, Mm -hmm. And you have freaking Tangled, where uh, Rapunzel's able to, like, well, she used to, and then it, you know, it was diced off. It was cut off, but I still have yet to watch the series. I really need to. <laughs> yeah, I heard the series was good. I heard a lot about that, too. But with Frozen, um, it's kind of like... Like, I'm kind of on the same boat with Riley. That the latest trailer, I'm just sitting there thinking, uh, okay, so you have this lost village that nobody can enter or leave? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> it's, uh, okay, I, I hope that this is all explained. So, yeah, um... <laughs> Am I gonna go see this movie? Pretty much. I'm pretty much gonna go and spend my, you know, spend my ten dollars to sit in the theater. Probably a little extra for snacks, popcorn, and hot dogs, you know, all that shit, and uh, see what happens next. I mean, that'll be the first time I'll see a frozen movie in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you missed watching uh, Get a Horse in 3D with the first uh, Frozen film. Get a horse. Yeah, you remember the uh, the shorts that they had before some Disney films? They had that one of uh, oh yeah, basically Steamboat Willie style Mickey Mouse and the gang, and they keep popping out into three D onto this into into the screen. And this stuff like I that. know nothing about. Like whenever it comes to you know something related to that style, or I'm just saying this with a pinch of salt, um, was uh, the, the 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 Paper Man short. Like, uh, let me see if I can find the clip on YouTube. Um, it's all like really shitty quality. It looks like <laughs> <laughs> and the, the YouTube quality. I mean, <laughs> uploaded in one sixty p. One sixty p. Okay, for some reason this is double vision, but this should work. J12, right, gonna... I don't think there's going to be that song replayed again. Like, uh, how much are you willing to bet that if Frozen 2 ever plays Let It Go in theaters, people are just going to get up and leave? I don't know. I think people might cheat. Well, let, let me backtrack on that. I think all the little girls will cheer. Okay, that's fair. Rosary. Um... I think I've ran out of things to say about Frozen 2. I think we're uh, ready to move on to the next topic, which I'm sure some of you are excited to talk about, because I'm excited to talk about. Here we go. Steven Universe Future. So the other day, the opening Steven was... Universe Future. Yeah, so the other day, <laughs> and you can see Peridot in the picture, just like raising her arms while singing. Uh, I l- yeah, I love how she just comes up and says, Steven Universe Future. So this, uh, so this opening came out the other day, and it was, it was on Twitter, it was on YouTube. It's, uh, there's quite a lot of hype surrounding it. Um, 
And additionally, I found an article that actually explains all of this. I'm going to go ahead and link it, if I can get a hold of it. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and post this in here. And uh, let me go ahead and post this in the Twitch. Steven Universe, a great opening sequence for final season. Yep. Derek... Do not, do not insult my child. <laughs> do not. <laughs> what are you talking? I have no idea. He's asking why Peridot isn't tall. <laughs> <laughs> do not insult my. <laughs> <laughs> Leave my daughter alone. <laughs> Don't ever speak to me or my son ever again. Oh my god, god dude. Golden, there's so many. I can't even read it. Because there's so many ads in the way. Oh, uh, I, I'm actually gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna volunteer to read it. So don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So mm. it's hard to believe that Steven Universe is finally coming to an end. However, the upcoming epilogue miniseries have just been announced, and the Cartoon Network series is getting a new title and opening sequence. The opening sequence was unveiled at New York Comic Con, where creator Rebecca Sugar also confirmed that the epilogue will be a rather short one, but, put, um, but it should provide a fitting conclusion to Steven's story. The new opening sequence features a new song, Here, uh, Here We Are in the Future, which I think was also in the movie. Which yeah. now has the other characters joining in for the show's th uh, new theme. Unlike We Are the Crystal Gems, which features the voices of Steve, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, the new song brings in the entire Crystal Gem team. There are interesting glimpses at what we could look forward to in the Steven Universe future. Peridot, Lapis, Bismuth, and Spinel, and the Diamonds. Also, <laughs> I say and Spinel because apparently everybody loves Spinel. And I love her, man. <laughs> And the diamonds uh, also show up in the opening sequence. Since the miniseries has taken place several years in the future, there's a possibility that Earth and Homeworld will be more intertwined than in the final season. Um, okay, that, that, that doesn't sound anything new. Um, we're currently, uh, oh, we're certainly loving the new opening sequence and the new theme song for the show. However, we're also kind of sad that this will be the final, uh, season of Steven Universe. Nevertheless, there's little doubt that the epilogue miniseries will cover a lot of storylines and is set to wrap up everyone's arc. Let's just hope everyone gets the hap, um, the happy ever after they deserve. Steven Universe has not yet been given an official release date. Stay tuned for more updates on this story. So, as usual, we start from the top. Riley, fire away. Give out your feelings. I'm honestly really looking forward in seeing what they're doing with this, because I was like, what do they really have to go with the story? Like, where do they have to go? And then, it, uh, um, just from what we've seen from the new intro alone, it looks like there's going to be some, what's the term? Dissension amongst some of the gems. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jasper's among them. Of course, uh, yeah, of course she would be. <laughs> and I, I, I'm just really liking what I'm looking at. And, and the fact that it's shorter hopefully means that there is going to be less filler. Because before, like, the last, what, 20 episodes, Steven Universe was, like, infamous for all these filler episodes that nobody gave a crap about. And then came the other controversial, um, uh, you know, story twists and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I thought it, that being controversial was stupid, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you can see it coming doesn't mean it's a bad twist. Oh, there, there's there's much more than that. Um, and people are like, uh, and some, like, even this, like, um, Ian Jones Cordy, one of the co-creators of the show with Rebecca Sugar, uh, even confirmed on Twitter that it's more like a post-show, a post-series or a epilogue series rather than a continuation of season, like a season, season six of Steven Universe. But for all intensive purposes, it is pretty much a uh, season six. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just interested in seeing what they do with the story and like with all the less filler in it and just want to see how these characters move on and stuff. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. I mean, we only got like a 30 second clip. So. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I know that they're like 30 seconds. Like, they can still tell so much. 
Um, oh, I, oh, I do love how like Steven is wearing his dad's shirt underneath his jacket now. You know, the black the black t shirt with the star. Mm hmm. And it's just you you notice some of these little details when you keep looking at it though, like like again with the shirt and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I I think I'm good. Uh, wolf header. Yeah, wolf head. You up? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, my thoughts on Steven Universe Future are pretty much the same as Riley's, where for the longest time I was like, where go? There's nowhere left to go. Like, freaking White Diamond is like a good White Diamond now. There's nowhere left to go. And then I saw this movie, and then it came to the conclusion that they could just make up new story as they go. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they could just make up Go so as long as they still have stuff to write, I guess. I, I guess that they're just going to continue on with the. Um, they're just going to continue on with the show. I'm look. A lot of people are saying that it's just going to be a mini series, so it might be really short. Like they might just tie up some loose ends. Like there's still the kindergarten. There's still a lot of stuff to address, and uh, uh God, I, my mind just trailed off for a second. Uh, what else? The cluster. Yeah, the cluster. There's still a lot of stuff to address. There's, I, one of the theories is the the uh, the in the in the intro how there's like that white diamond looking figure amongst the bad guys that's actually like a fusion between white diamond and the cluster somehow because it has like the same coloring as the cluster. It, it, that's one theory. Mm -hmm. hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, Steven and Connie are in a I think. She kissed him on the cheek. I mean, is that really... Uh, I'd like to hear it from them, honestly, before I'm I'm, I'm going to just assume. <laughs> okay, so it might just be a crush. It might be a little awkward crush right now. But what I... Would, what would be an awkward crush? When you saw the movie, Connie kissed Steven on the cheek, so I was, immediately I was like, they're a thing! They They did it! <laughs> like victory dance, you know. <laughs> but now, but now, but now, right? No, I want to hear them say it, and I'm just like, I don't know. I think, I, I think, like little actions like that is like when they imply something. We have a duty as an audience member to just latch onto it and draw the conclusion ourselves. Yeah. Same with Lyra and Bonbon, to be honest with you. Oh, God, yeah, the recent episode of Friendship is Magic. Yeah. Muzzle Tov! <laughs> so that's all my thoughts on Steven Universe. Okay. Excited to see it. I want to see where they'll go, and I'll be happily waiting. You know, so there's yeah. that. Yeah, so... And I can make a tasty donut! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> I still love that clip. <laughs> Why did you ever show me that? Now it's stuck in my head forever. <laughs> this is fucking Golden's fault. But in all seriousness, um, I'm 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 excited to see what Steven Universe future unfolds. Um, like, yeah, I can definitely see this as a, more of a slice of life thing because there hasn't been anybody. Uh, dealing with any particular conflict in a major way. Not that I know of. I mean, there are a couple of things that are yet to be, you know, taken care of, such as uh, the humans that were in, uh, they were in, um, they were in some other uh, facility somewhere in space. Um, it's that scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the zoom in. Yeah. The zoo people. And. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You might as well just say zoo you people because they're treated like animals. That's why I said zoomins. <laughs> the zoo people. <laughs> but you know those, the, you know those guys who are in the facility and everything. They still have yet yeah. to know more about the world. Like, how much are you willing to bet that that would actually be a fitting slice of life episode? That they're like, okay, you got to learn what this is, and you have to learn what that is. These are things you think mm. of on your own, compared to you know some little earring that tells you saying things like do this and do yeah. that, and. 
you know, like that, that. I think that's just more of an example of how I'm perceiving, you know, what this slice of life is. Just, you know, fixing little problems or fixing little things like, um, like that. And there's also the cluster, which it still exists and everything. Um, wait a minute. Wasn't the cluster taken care of at the, um, the, the season finale of uh, the one with the White Diamond? Um, we don't know what really happened with them. They're just still in the center of the earth, as far as we know. Oh wait, yeah. okay, I got that mixed up with the other um, the other gems that were held in those little bubbles. Because uh, we did oh. see, yeah, because I did see that uh, Jasper was um, was in a, <laughs> a tub. Attack mode. <laughs> Golden Fox, the zoo people, Mormons. I don't even understand what you're trying to imply. <laughs> Um, JK100. I'm certain that a lot of people want to see uh, Spinel again. Because Sp <laughs> Spinel has That's gained right. so I heard much. This story over and over again. Gee, the song will never leave my fucking head. <laughs> what but did they do without me? What did they do? What did you <laughs> play without me? Dude. What did you play? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, <laughs> Cuphead toy action figure. I hope to see her around again. <laughs> <laughs> Why does people? It, it, what gets me is it's not really Cuphead. It's more of a Fleischer style because Cuphead yeah. is he heavily inspired by the Fleischer brothers. So I'm. <laughs> well, the, uh, okay. okay well, at people... the very least, it, at the very least, she's very comparable to the animation of Cuphead. You know that rubber animation. I mean, that was kind of the style back with the Fleischer animation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just love her chaotic animation too. Oh yeah, I also, I also yeah saw recently somebody made a meme where they say, "That's right, I heard this story over and over and over and over and over and over," and it's just <laughs> it's, the, it's it's her like like bouncing around like a um one of those slinky uh, bounces across the floor. <laughs> oh, have you seen the SpongeBob one? Oh God, what? Let me see if I can find the SpongeBob one if my fucking Twitter will work. <laughs> Where it's basically that clip from Spongebob where people are all, like, <laughs> dressing up as Squidward, but it's like, you were emotionally damaged by Pink Diamond. You were emotionally Pink Diamond. <laughs> 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 Let me see if I can find it. Holy shit. God, dude. Steven's mom, Steven mom sucks. She's just awful. Yeah, no, and the sky is blue and the grass is green, so what else is new? Water uh, is wet. I, I actually liked her. <laughs> I liked her at first, but then I was because, but I didn't know anything about her and that stuff. I was like, oh, I really wanted to like you. Oh, I found it! I found it! Oh God, what? I found the clip I was talking about. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That's something I'll have to take a look at uh, after the podcast, like during post show. Yep. But um. Yeah, um, I hope to see more of Spinel and maybe do something about you know the uh, the, the the people in uh, that 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 space colony. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to say zoo people again. That was that was pretty fucked up <laughs> to say that. Was that was so offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I shot myself in the foot saying that. <laughs> Are you one of them there zoo people? Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I'm now being looked at as one of the most xenophobic fuckheads on the planet. <laughs> uh. Oh my god, dude. I think the biggest, <laughs> like, back to Pink Diamond, though, I think the biggest thing that got me to really hate Pink Diamond was not even the events uh, before the movie. I'm talking about, like, in the movie when this whole time she left Spinel standing there for 6,000 years, and it's become an online joke. Where now you can't really think the same way when watching the entire series. Yeah, because you in the back. Oh, did you see like Spinel is still standing there? <laughs> they, they of, like the best moment in Steven Universe, and Spinel's just sitting there in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> you see Garnet taking on Jasper. Go ahead and try to hit me or free able. Meanwhile, and it's Spinel just standing there. <laughs> 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 oh no you see Steven and Paradise taking care of the cluster meanwhile and it's, it's Spinel standing there <laughs> meanwhile 
<laughs> the shit that goes on between Steven oh getting God. separated from his gem and White Diamond. Meanwhile, it's Vanilla's still Who standing there. <laughs> what <are you> saying? <laughs> I'm the loser of the game you didn't know you were playing! Oof. What got me about that movie... Got me, but, like, what made me, like, laugh a little bit is, like, when Steven walked up to Spinell <laughs> and he was like, I can't do this to you. Actually... I totally can believe that my mom did this to you. Remember when he said that shit? <laughs> yes, I remember that. He looked off to the side. Yeah, that was I couldn't so even like, tell. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, fuck. actually, yeah, no, she would do that. Mm. <laughs> I was like, Steven knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Riley! Because you like... asshole! <laughs> what is this? Oh, I gotta okay. click it. Okay, I, my... I have to share this. <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> that was a sad episode of Futurama, huh, guys? It's mm -hmm. the one like most people remember. Yeah. This now is I'm just thinking about how loyal dogs are. No, okay, if oh. you want to talk about, you know, freaking loyal dogs, um, have you seen Hachi a Dog's Tail? No. Isn't that like no. one of those like yearly dog movies that they keep coming? No, out no, those movies are just those are fucking joke cash ins. Like you can easily tell when they release one of their movies in January. Like yeah, no, it's just, it doesn't look like it's going to be a good movie. But oh no. yeah, it's like one's a dog's purpose or a dog's live life or something like that. Okay, I swear to God, if if another cat goes over a waterfall, I'm gonna find Golden and kick him in the shins. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but no, Hachi, Hachi or Hachiko, A Dog's Tale is not like those movies. It's actually like, it, it, it's one of those movies that put me to tears. So it stars Richard Gere, and he finds this Akita pup. And apparently this Akita pup was just sitting around in a cage somewhere, probably got misshipped or something like that. And he took the dog into its own, um, in, in its own home and raised it and everything. And the dog was so, so loyal to him that one day Richard Gere's character dies. He, like, has a okay. stroke or something like that. But Hachi doesn't know. And many times, like, on a daily basis, he would wait for his master, and I put those in quotes, at the train station. And it became such a habit where he just sit he just sits there throughout his entire life. Like, yeah, he gets fed and everything, but throughout his entire life, he's sitting there at the station. And it becomes painful to watch. Like a year passes by and everybody tries to, you know, talk some sense into the dog. But the dog still continues doing it over and over again. As the movie ends, the dog is at its last age, and at the last nine breath, he goes to the he goes to the station once more. And it also doesn't help that you have this piano, this 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 mellow piano music with some violin and cello work that it's well composed, and just like you would have to see it to understand it. Like just the very thought that he's still waiting at the station despite the fact that he doesn't know that Richard's dead. That is sad, boys. There are um, so many like d sad dog movies. Like holy shit! Like old Yella. No, ma, he was my dog. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I've never seen old Yella, so now I gotta go see it now. Oh or my Marley god! Marley and me. <laughs> I've never seen it. Okay, well, um, that will definitely be something for you to check out at one point. Um, but getting back to Hachi. And I'm going to try to, you know, talk about this very, very briefly. Um, the movie was actually based on a real event that happened in the 30s, and it happened in Japan. Mm. It happened, I Aww. think, during the Great Depression, too. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, the Hachi movie was a modern, a modern iteration of it. Um, it's a movie that I, de I, I definitely recommend checking out, but if you're going to do so, I do recommend having a Kleenex box. Okay, noted. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, th you know that's much better than the whole a dog's purpose or a dog's journey. I can't believe they use that. You know, looking in hindsight when thinking about the Hachi movie. So yeah, uh, that's like yeah. January is usually the time of year where they just dump all this schlock out. Legion, anybody? 
Oh, fucking Legion. I remember that film. <laughs> but the baby, it's going to burn. <laughs> that was... I don't know what to say about that film, honestly. Here we are talking about, like, slice of life shit while we're talking about a potential miniseries that's going to become a slice of life. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. I think it's time. Also, Go ahead. I just remember Steven can drive now. Oh, yeah, that's oh, cool. Oh, yeah, that was a clip in the fucking intro where he was driving. He is 16. I mean, yeah, that's right. Like, in the original series, he was, like, 14, and now he's, like, 16 or something. Mm-hmm. I remember the first, like, the very first time I saw anything about, and this is when they were prom- I saw a tweet from the creators, and they were hyping up that Steven had a neck. I shit you not. Oh, I was like, Steven yeah. has a neck. <laughs> He's taller and he has a neck. I was like, what? okay, guys, just calm down. He got taller and he has a neck. Okay. And then I, and then the new movie coming out, and I was like, oh shit, nice. Uh, he'll be driving, and I can make a tasty donut. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love that clip so much. My God, she tossed uh, him. Oh yeah, <laughs> Ye- just yeeted him off of there. <laughs> I'm still going to say about the next segment. I don't fucking have anything. Um, blank I'm, brain. So some people are asking, like, uh, doesn't Steven have a driver's license? I'm pretty sure that, you know, he may have gained a license at that point. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, confirmed. You can just, like, piece it together. When you're around that age on average, yeah, you're old enough to have a car. You're old enough to have a driver's license and, you know, do that stuff. You know, I just remembered something. Isn't Steven's, like, middle name Rose? I'm going to pretend Steven you didn't Rose say Universe. That. Yeah, I, I, th- I think that his mom's name is actually his middle name, if I remember correctly. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> at, at this point, like, just please, we do not speak of either Pink Diamond or Rose Quartz. <laughs> I'm going to look this up because I'm pretty sure his, na- his middle name is, is Rose. You are that fucking determined. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the, you know, we'll know this in the Steven Universe future. <laughs> Come live with us in the palace. <laughs> God, the diamonds are fawning over him. I know, like, it seemed a little, like, obviously it's two years uh, afterwards. Like, some people have issues with some of the redemptions of the characters. Like, I didn't take that big of an issue, but I can see why. Because the things of, the, you know, the kind of damage that White Diamond caused is very questionable. And even though the damage was undone at that point, she actually did cost a lot of people's lives. I think this has to do with the fact that when you have these leaders out there, you make commitments that will actually, you know, cost lives. Mm-hmm. This is going to open up a can of worms the more I talk about it. Oh no, it's Steven Quartz universe. Oh, Steven Rose fucking, universe. Oh, shoot. <laughs> fucking shoot me. I mean, it, it's definitely metaphorical in hindsight because Steven has, you know, the remains of Pink Diamond's thing. Her, uh, the, the Pink so that's how I would explain that. Yeah, the strength <laughs> and everything. It's like in spirit, he has a little bit of his mother. And he has to fix all of her shit. All the hell that was caused. Thanks. I Pink- hate that. No, here we go. Uh, like, something happens. Hashtag, thanks, Pink Diamond. Spin- thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> there was a war. All because, you know, Pink Diamond decided, you know, she wanted to do something different in her life. Hashtag, thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> she disguised herself as I Rose wanted to be the new... She disguised herself as Rose Quartz, so that way she wouldn't be located, even though they get located anyway, and that's a mess for Steven to clean up. Thanks, Pink Diamond. Spinel was left there for 6,000 years. Thanks, Pink Diamond. Straight <laughs> away. <laughs> I want it to be the next thanks Obama <laughs> meme, where it's like, I got up in my tortilla chip. Thanks, Pink Diamond. Like, I want it to be that kind of shit. <laughs> Thanks, M.A. Larson. 
<laughs> no, Larson didn't do anything. I oh, was just saying. Leave Larson I, alone. I was Larson stopped that. writing for the show, like, for Friendship is Magic since, I know. Like, season, like, season five. Since? Was season six, and he was my, he was my favorite writer, honestly. He was my favorite writer. My favorite M.A. Larson episode was the fame and misfortune of that You episode. liked that one? That, I loved it because it got a, such a bad reaction out of the fandom. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically. That's why I loved it so much. How is it that we're still bringing up Friendship is Magic when talking about Steven Universe? Because the once shows you go are Brony, kind of similar. Back. The shows are kind of similar in the sense that, like, well... In one show, they're like, Steven is like, you know what? I'm going to talk out all my like, MLP tries to do the same when it's not like shooting rainbow lasers out of horns and shit. So, <laughs> but those are awesome. Those are awesome. Yes. In all seriousness, I actually do like the joke of uh, the whole thanks, Pink Diamond. It's like she disguised herself as Rose Quartz and never said anything to Steven about a war that he will have to deal with. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> no, it's like uh, it's like the thanks Obama mead, but but only <laughs> thanks Pink Diamond. Thanks, Pink Diamond. Thanks. Got to flatten my tire. Thanks, Pink Diamond. It's like just nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cluster built in the center of the world, and Pink did not know anything. Said nothing about it to Steven. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> I don't even know if she knew about the cluster thing. I'm just making shit up along the way. My tire went flat. Thanks, Pink Diamond. Hashtag plagiarizing <laughs> Wolfhead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. The string of my guitar snapped. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> Dude, I heard you had a new guitar stand. How many guitars do you have right now? I currently have four. You realize that you have an appointment, but you kind of missed it, and you're like, oh, great. Now I have to make and set up a new appointment. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> you know you're a guitarist when your guitar rack has a guitar rack on it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what the fuck are you going to put on it, spaghetti? <laughs> oh, great. Now there's a mess in the living room. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> Which is so sad because that first I remember the episode when they showed her off on the on the uh, videotape actually made me tear up too when she said she was going to become a half. Back a when we all thought she was good, yeah, yeah, that's that episode honestly always made me tear up, and now I can never watch that episode the same way again. You make us all feel ashamed of ever liking the character. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> oh great! I've got the red ring of death on my Xbox 360. Thanks, Pink Diamond. We get the joke. I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> oh no! I have hepatitis B. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> you gotta talk to Greg about that one. <laughs> you know, I mean, Wolfhead, your internet fucker. keeps your internet is so slow that your call keeps cutting off. Thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think we I think we've done enough with the pink diamond jokes. Um, well, I I think it's I think it's time we move on to the last seg. Well, second to last segment because there you know there's always the Q and A. But um, here we go, nostalgia circle round two. Um, we're coming close to uh, Halloween, and I do have plans to talk more about Halloween stuff. But you know, just for something a little different on the, this um, this uh, nostalgia circle. Um, what are the biggest fond memories during Halloween? Like, obviously, you, you know, you put on your costume and you go out and grab a bucket and you say trick or treat and you get a bunch of candy. Was there any year, like, special in particular? Like, I'm going to ask this, you know, like, kind of like the chat is, like, I'm going to kind of leave that to the chat. But I also wanted to leave this up to uh, Riley and Wolfhead. And Riley, I'm going to let you go first. Any fond memories you have with Halloween? Oh, yeah. One of my favorite Halloweens was... I was over at like a family friend's house. My family members were all there. We were all dressed up in costumes and stuff because this guy used to hold like a Halloween party every year. And we had the Halloween marathon on Nickelodeon, all premiering. You you guys remember Crybaby Lane? No, I don't. 
it was it was this made for TV movie that premiered on Nickelodeon's one Nickelodeon once, but never again. And it was thought lost for years until like 2011, 2012, when it was released back on like Nick at Night or the Teen Nick channel, whatever. I watched that as a kid, and it gave me nightmares. Like holy shit! Like basically, the premise is there's these two uh, there was these twin boys who were born. Only one was a good uh, twin, and the other was like an evil twin or something. And what ended up happening is when they died, they were buried in the wrong grave. So the evil one got in the good one's grave, and the good one got into the evil one's grave. And there's some kind of curse because of that. It's it's such a weird, weirdly morbid uh, premise for a horror, especially a kids' horror film. <laughs> It, and I just remember like seeing the scenes with the earthworms and stuff, and just like that gave me nightmares for days. Like, holy shit! This I would have to look into. I, I think I actually found the thing. It, I watched it like a few years back, and it honestly, honestly, wasn't as scary as I remembered. Mm-hmm. But looking back on it now, it's still like a funny memory. Okay. Oh my god, that's right. It, the special was uh, hosted by Melissa Joan Hart too. <laughs> That's going back. <laughs> okay. I but Halloween, yeah, I absolutely love Halloween. I think I was also dressed as Superman that year too. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got that John Williams song in my head. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm now getting mental images of like flashing blue text just flying across in space. <laughs> Riley in space. I am Superman. Like I, I still love watching that opening segment. Just no, it's like the John Williams theme, only it's played with a kazoo. Played with what? A kazoo. A kazoo. That that, that rings a bell. What is that? You know, it's like, like a little. Oh no, it's not a harmonica. It's like a harmonica, but it's like a horn. Yeah, it's this weird, like, little thing you got as a kid that you can make. Wait, are you talking about those wooden flutes? The do 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 do. You know, the one with no, the yeah, white noise right. in South Park. Um, I'm not sure. I th- wait, not white noise, thing, brown but... noise. Oh no, those were um. What the fuck were those things called? I used to have to play them in music class. Uh, I forget what those are called, but the, yeah, no, it's not that because it was just more like a type of sound. Oh. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Like, if you use your voice and it kind of creates a... Okay, now I'm starting to yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, like, little Riley dressed up as Superman, and he's, like, he's probably on strings, and we got, like, some kind of um, some kind of green screen effect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Superman. <laughs> And then, so, like, at one point, you become the real, su- like, the real Superman equivalent. Like, yeah, I'm super... And smack her dead into a wall. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> All right, um, shall we pass... Oh, the- yeah, it was a recorder. That's what you were thinking of as a recorder. Yeah, but uh, shall we pass it, uh, pass the turn? Oh, yeah, uh, Wolf had your turn. Okay, first of all, recorders sound like ass. I don't. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> oh yeah, fifth grade. Every but like and... I, I dread being a parent because I know one day my kids are going to have to come home with the recorder and play, and I will have to listen to that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> like they teach Nostalgia in... Circle Halloween. They they teach uh, in every elementary school, I swear. Okay, but yeah, go ahead. I don't know if you guys ever ran into these kind of... I think, like... I don't know if it was, like, a New York thing, but uh, every Halloween, everyone would dress up as Scream series, but there was one specific mask that I wanted, and it had, like, this heart that pumped blood into the mask blood but like red liquid oh, into the mask i know which and one it, you're talking about yeah yeah and it made all the red like liquid come down on the yeah, mask yeah that was a special to like face uh, all bloody yeah ghost face mask yeah oh wow yeah i never got i i got no wait i did have one but then it broke oh. liquid everywhere and it looked like i like i was in a murder scene one time so yeah that, that's <laughs> something that happened to me like in my young youth 
Sorry if my story is like really short, but that is what happened to me. You know, at that point, I could just like literally imagine, you know, that song playing in your head. How could this happen to me when you find out it's broken? <laughs> yeah, I I think I broke it on the same day I got it too, which was real. Oh, I I could just uh, I could just imagine the pain right there. It's like, oh, and you just got it. <laughs> sucks dude i i can i can feel for that it was a good match though it was super scary oh i'll i'll, I'll bet it was all right so is that about it or that is about it that is okay. all out of me okay so um there's plenty of there's plenty of um you know memories to choose from as far as you know halloween goes but the one that i do seem to remember the most and this is something in which, you know, some people in neighborhood, some neighbors, they could be a real dicks when it comes to embracing the Halloween holiday. Oh, and, hell yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, no, this was one of them. Like, th this was a pretty cool Halloween in hindsight, because not only was I trick-or-treating in my neighborhood area, but a few, like, a pretty good number of blocks down, um... Uh, my cousins were also uh, around the area. Now, like, okay, not necessarily in the same neighborhood, but there was, like, the other side of the neighborhood. So after trick-or-treating, my parents took me and my brother, and we went over there, and we got to trick-or-treat there. Upon reaching there, there was a house across the street, or down the street. It was one of the two. You know, take your pick. Um, and it was, it had one of those special designs. It's got, like, these glittering lights. You have this, like, the front yard is made of a graveyard. You have all these tombstones. You've got, you know, this, you know, woo sort of stuff with it you know i could just like they have that stuff they probably have you know those silly little bat things that shake around and go nee! you know trying to yeah you know. so there's a lot oh of, i remember those yeah so there, there's build up to all those and you know there's a bunch of glow sticks all over the field in order to you know all over the grass just so you can see where you're going which okay that's fair glow sticks look pretty cool i'll I'm not going to lie about that, but upon reaching the door, and this is a thing that some people like to do in Neighbors, this one was the biggest one. They come in, wearing masks, and scare the shit out of us before offering us candy. You just, like, you just... Okay, go, so they would, like, jump out? You, they, they fucking jump scare. And all, right. all of us freaked out. They're just like, ding, ding. Open, the door opens, and... Oh, God fucking damn it, man! <laughs> And, and it also didn't help that they were playing, like, organ music. You know, the stuff you would hear from, like, Dracula and such. Like, dee 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 You know, that sort of stuff. So there was a <laughs> yeah. lot of intense atmosphere yeah. going on there. And seeing these guys go, Rah! like, oh, you motherfuckers. Like, they create, <laughs> like, I will give them credit for creativity because they kind of created this, like, this maze sort of thing. <laughs> Um, instead of just walking like up to um, you know straight up to the door, it's it's to make it entertaining. You know, I'll give them credit yeah. for that. But the fact that you go and jump scare me, I'm like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> and the jump scare was so fucking massive. Like it's nothing compared to when Bliss went and scared me during my streams, or even Solars. Mm. Oh, okay, so they would they would go all out with it. Yeah, though they went all out with it. You know, the creepy masks and then going. Aah! You know, screaming mm. at the top of the lungs. <laughs> yeah, like me, my brother, and my cousins, we were like, oh, fucking hell. Mm -hmm. I was like like maybe eight years old. Uh, but ever since then, I was actually a lot more cautious, like trick-or-treating. I'm like, okay, how much are you willing to bet this person is going to try to, like, scare the dick out of me? It's like, ding, ding. <laughs> Anything at all. I'm waiting for the door open. Okay. Trick or treat. Okay, thank you. And that was that became such an instinct ever since then. <laughs> Golden is just he's just like a hundred percent on his guard. Like he has to like take a <laughs> fucking trick or treat just to defend himself. <laughs> like, I swear, if somebody else goes blah, I am going to punch them in the face. Kind of like that one guy where. <laughs> Because I remember that there was a video clip where a guy was like, he was um he was being interviewed, and some dude popped out of a trash can wearing that scream mask, and the dude freaked out and punched him in the face directly. Like, you punched them in the mask. It's like, oh! Okay, I think I think I saw this video. Was the was the guy, like, a black guy, like a big black guy? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I saw this video. Like, he got scared for a, a millisecond, but then he reeled back and just cocked <laughs> 
So I was starting to do, like develop those reflexes. Like I swear to God, if somebody goes to jump scare me, pow! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, there goes my candy. <laughs> I mean, like that guy deserved it. Oh yeah, like he deserved yeah. getting punched in the face. Yeah, no. Feel bad for that. Like jump scares can be fun. They can be hilarious. But sometimes, you know, it, it's a dick move in hindsight. <laughs> And of course, the, yeah. you know the, the guys who literally scared the hell out of me and everybody else who went trick or treating that year. Like there, there was no real ill intent, and there wasn't any real harm involved. But it definitely got your attention, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I will give them credit. There was a lot of build up to the jump scare. So, it, you know, job well done. You create this big payoff. So, yeah. Um. Have any of you guys ever had any, like, supposed jump scare moments, or... Wait, repeat that? You cut out. Oh, son of a bitch. Discord, come on! Have any of you... Have any of you had any moments where somebody actually legit, like, tried to jump scare you? Um... I think... I think I was in a confrontation... Hmm. A confrontation okay. with what? I think I was in a confrontation, but not really. Uh, one time I was wearing a Scream outfit with the bloody mask. It was just a regular one. And I went to a Halloween costume party. And there was another dude there with a, with a Scream outfit had a stare down. Like we stood like two feet away from each other, just staring each other down. And then I walked away because it got kind of weird. That fucking goes. That was kind of weird. You should be used to weird by now, though. I am, but that was when I was a kid, and I wasn't. Good point. Good point. So that that that's that. <laughs> oh, I got one more memory. If okay. that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so my friends and I made this haunted trail thing a few years back, where we lived like close to the woods, and so we like cleared out a bunch of like uh, brush and stuff and did like had these like tours going around with some of the neighborhood p parents and kids mm -hmm. and i was uh i played the uh psychotic killer on the loose <laughs> of course oh, you'd no. go for something like that that just that, that that's that's nothing new but go on Oh, and I, I was playing the escaped killer, and I would t make a toast with my glass and say, Come and drink of the blood of the innocent. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, there were so many kids and parents I actually scared that night. Holy shit. <laughs> you know, if, if that actually was caught on camera, I would have loved to have seen it. I wish it had been caught on camera, honestly. This was, like, when I was 12 or 13, if I remember correctly. Like, okay, I will tell you this much. I know about what I said about people, you know, giving out jump scares. But, you know, job is, you know, a job well done is a job well done. Um, the fact that a child would be a, would actually legit scare adults. Mm-hmm. I, you know, that's, that's, that's where I definitely had to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> mm. You guys ever been to any haunted houses as adults or even as kids? No, I haven't. Oh. I didn't get out that often. There was a. Uh, uh, I was at Universal uh, last year and I went to the Fear the Walking Dead ride, which is basically like a haunted house but with like extra production shit. It honestly actually kind of like scares you. Because like the people dressed up as zombies and stuff are like fully out in the open. They, they look like they could actually go after you and stuff. Mm hmm. So just imagine all these people dressed up in this thing, dressed as, uh, like, with the same makeup effects from the Walking Dead show. Not that I watch it, but still cool. Okay. Hmm, let's see. Let's see. The only... Oh, go ahead. The only, the only like, sides I've ever been on are those kind of, like... Like you sit in a cart and they wheel you through a haunted house and it's just like scary animatronic. I or think like I know what you're talking like, about. Yeah, yeah I've been in one of about. those before. Like there are times yeah. you feel like you're being touched and it's just like, dude, don't touch me, man. The implication yeah, those, of saying that. <laughs> those really aren't that scary. Like I, I've been to like Dony Park and they'll show you like an animatronic cutting another animatronic's head off and you know it's like, you're just like, all right, I get it. All right, well, You're like, gonna I'd fly some lights at me. Like, dude, so what do you the, the, the freaking Indiana Man? Jones ride was scarier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you make of the Haunted Mansion, then? Oh, the Haunted Mansion was just there. Okay, I do remember this. And this actually happened the same year I was freaking jump-scared by the neighbors. Um, for my eighth birthday, okay, this is kind of like derailing the subject for just a bit, but it, it relates to jump scares. Um, mm. The first, I remember the first time I was in, you know, the Haunted Mansion, and they go down this long elevator, and the, it's still a thing, so it's really nothing new when I mention this, so no spoiler there. Um, there's an an, there's an announcer where they say, like, there's no way out, and you'll have to figure it out yourself. And you can see it above the screen. They have, like, the you know, these green screen effects and such. And unexpectedly, you have this, you know, thunderous, you know, lightning sound effect that would scare me because of how loud it is. And then you look up, and it's a dead body. You know, it's, it's a hung body. It's like, oh, God, come on. Uh. <laughs> the rest of which was just, like, cheesy organ music. And, you know, there's this, like, mirror effect that's projected somewhere, and it looks like there's a ghost, um, you know, sitting right next to you. You know, that's the whole experience of riding yeah. the Haunted Mansion itself. But, yeah, no, I remember the, you know, there's no way out. And it's a dead body hanging on the ceiling. Rim gritty ghosts come out to socialize. Yeah. Spooky, scary <laughs> skeletons and shivers down your spine. You know, the weird thing is I actually used to be terrified of the Haunted Mansion when I was like seven years old. I was terrified to go on it. I was terrified to go on it at the second time simply because of the first time I went on there. Yeah, I was honestly looking forward to be scared when I went on for the first time in like a, oh, two decades last year. Then the second time I went on, it was just so I could get in a dark space with my ex. <laughs> okay, just reading one of the chats here. I actually like how um, how rhyming this message is. If someone scares you with a mask, then by instinct, you kick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> and they go to the hospital. <laughs> it's not like a haiku? What the fuck? <laughs> I think it's more like uh, cracking cold with the boys. Oh my god! I don't have a cold one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have like a gallon of lemonade, but that doesn't crack. That's like a bag of liquid. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like Riley wants to have himself a cold one. I've been making vectors of like cold ones for everybody else for my highlight reels. So now I got to keep that mentally noted. <laughs> at, at this point, I think we're kind of... Um, we're kind of like running dry on whatever else to talk about. So I think it's time we move to the Q&A. Oh, you ask us watch... some questions, chat. Ask oh, yeah. away, ask away, ask away, ask away. Well, ask while we away. wait for them to get the lead out of their asses, how are you guys? <laughs> yeah, because we had that pocket of silence. I was sitting there thinking, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you see that video I made of you? <laughs> Which one? Like, where it's Mudbriar saying it technically over and over again. Oh, and well, then Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah, and then no, your I've... vector pops up and he goes, It's my old friend. <laughs> Hang on, like, did you actually make a video of this? I made a video. You didn't see it? It was on Was it on Twitter? Twitter. Okay, so it was on Twitter. Yes. I gotta take a look at this. I can find it right now. Let me I do see. appreciate that. I'll definitely take a look at it during um, during post show. Okay. All Let me right. find it. Right. Oh, now that's right. We're going to do post show later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a quick question. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep it short, but this is a good question. Favorite horror movies? Um, my favorite horror movies are Nightmare on Elm Street and Evil Dead 2. I'm going to stop there. Um, okay. The Exorcist and Stephen King's Rose Red. If anybody knows Stephen King's Rose Red. All right. Uh, let's see. I, I was very, like, obsessed with the Saw series, but then after four, I was just like, all right, I get it. Not really. A, <clears throat> to be. But I was really into Saw at first. Oh, another one. Ask all Alien Predator or Terminator. Terminator. That's, that's a hard one, honestly. Um... I'm going to have to go Alien. I, I have to go Alien. The Xenomorph? I'm going to go Predator on yeah. this one. Okay. No, I like, each, like, no matter what choice it is, they're all awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, oh, yeah. If, if Bliss was here, she'd be all over the freaking Alien. 
because she's a big. You know, fan of I that. actually liked that ter- that uh, Predator film that came out last year. I, I haven't it was... seen it yet. I've heard some mixed reviews. It's uh, if you're if you're going in not really thinking that much, it's just a good time. Honestly, like I I didn't really go in with any big expectations, and I and I liked it well enough. Okay. Um, also, somebody asked earlier who my favorite characters are from Naruto, and I'm like, um, I haven't watched Naruto. I'm not a big anime sort of person. That's right, he pronounces it Naruto instead of Naruto, people. Mm. <laughs> that, that just shows how fucking American I am. I'm sitting there, <laughs> you know, being patriotic while eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> And you have a uh, AK-47 over your back. <laughs> oh no! Like I got a freaking shotgun. That's what I go for, or a sniper. Sawed off. Got a buck shot. <laughs> Sawed off shotgun. Okay, so uh, somebody is asking permission to create my OC in an action figure or something. Hang on, I gotta scroll up a bit. Okay. Um, Will he have kung fu grip? Okay, Golden, have you asked Keyframe if I can make her OC from an MVP point? Of t- oh, yeah, that's right. I think I remember that. Um, no, I have not. I got so, like, I completely zoned out from there. If you want, you can try to message her. Um, you know, it's a simple yes or no question. She can't answer right now. There's stuff going on in which I'm not going to go over the details. Favorite Halloween mm. song? Um, I'll have to think about that. Spooky, uh, scary skeleton. Yeah, like everybody knows that one, but like I'm sure there's <laughs> other like you know Halloween this related Halloween. stuff. This, this is, is Halloween. Halloween. From this Nightmare. is Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. Especially the Marilyn Manson version. If yeah, that's the right. Mar- there was um there was actually a CD that had all the covers from like different like musicians and such. Like Corn did a cover of the um Lock Santa in for like 90 years or something like that. I don't know the name of the song. Oh, I put a spell on you. Uh, <laughs> and you listening to your Steven music verse and pony music while I'm digging into rock music gems? <laughs> Let's see. Do you remember the game called Space Hulk Deathwing? It's basically Warhammer 40k, but in space... Instead of calling themselves comrades, they call themselves brother. I I don't know. Still waiting for other questions. People are posting links. <laughs> God damn it, Riley! <laughs> what the hell did you? Li- okay, that's something I'll have to take a look at. Let's. I start. found the tweet finally. Oh, yeah, the tweet I, I put up earlier with Steven Universe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a... F- I, yeah, watch that Steven Universe tweet up there. It's a, it makes me laugh every time I watch it. <coughs> what is this? Oh. Okay, so apparently uh, the link was the Marilyn Manson cover. All right. Pops up and he goes, "Hello, darkness, my old friend." So I, I was <laughs> waiting for like, because I was like, I wanted to see what video it was that Riley linked, and I was like, ah, uh, because I got to remember. Uh, let me what this is. let me just link it again, honestly. So no, no, no. I've I've already seen the link. It's it's Marilyn Manson's um, its song. Kidnap oh, no, the golden the... fox, throw him in front of a tea heat feed, make him watch Nightmare Before Christmas held up like a clockwork. Dude, I've seen the Nightmare Before Christmas. I just don't remember the name of the songs. Basically, who is what is your favorite Zelda character? Favorite Zelda Ganondorf. Ca- yeah, favorite Zelda character. That's uh, Zelda. Song. Zelda character. I said who Zelda. said Zelda? I said Zelda. I, said I know, Zelda. but that sounds like Volvo said backwards. My answer is Ganondorf. Ganondorf. I okay. like Ganondorf. Hmm. I'd have to say the Link. Golden from... is obviously going to say Link. Well, I Link can't really from... think of it. Like, okay, I will say somebody. Saria. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. Well, mine is uh, Link <laughs> from Wind Waker. Because <laughs> if... <laughs> there are honestly like different Links, and the one from Wind Waker just had the most personality. Like, remember that scene when, like, Tetra, like, gets him in the barrel and he just has, like, this look on his face, like, what? Oh, yeah, and he's trying to, like, break out of the barrel. (laughs) 
he just had so much personality on his face compared to other links. So I, just, I love it. I think that also has to do with like, because when it came to the older versions, there's like technical limitations. So now with GameCube having, you know, doing more than just gameplay, they can do expressions. Like they did a little bit of that during uh, Ocarina of Time, but you know, there's only so much you can do. Um, next question. What is your favorite classic Sonic game? Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Now the original. Sonic, do you mean 2D well, or Sonic. 3D? 2D. 2D. The one on the Genesis ah. where it's Sonic 3 and the Sonic and Knuckles and they have that expansion pack and you, you put them together as one and it becomes one big game. I've actually never played the 2D Sonic games before. Okay. That's not a surprise. You know, a lot of people these days are more accustomed to 3D games. So it's yeah, like whatever first, whatever old ass games that I grew up with is like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> the first Sonic game I ever played was Adventures, so that uh, tells you a lot right there. <laughs> oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay, here's here's one epic, uh, okay, not epic, but one quite a question. If you met Bob Iger, what would you say? Um, well, I obviously, I, mean, I, can't, can't... I obviously can't give him the finger. That'll cause some oh. problems. <laughs> but uh, Bob Iger... You know, the less I talk about him, the better. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> uh, what other questions do we have? See, I found the part where Stan goes berserk in death metal. Favorite rage game? What game that pisses you off to the point of rage quitting? Um, I would probably have to say the uh, getting of over it. That's it. That's that your game hint. is so fucking condescending when you fall back down. <laughs> okay, it's either that it's, like, it's either that or Quop. When you fall down and getting over it, the fucking narrator comes on and he's like, "Now, oh, when looks, you say Quop, looks like you lost some progress, what do you mean?" Q U O P. Oh no. Um. Yeah. Q W O P. Okay, because I heard something completely different. No. <laughs> Uh, let's see. But no, my favorite Rage game is actually a legit game to play through, and that's the Ghost and Goblin series. Um, the mm. first one is a pain in the ass. The second one, no, third one, like, it's one of those two, like, I can make much better progress. The third one, I remember playing the most, and I do want to beat that game one day. That's why I have not streamed it yet. Um, let's see, uh, looking over what else... Golden, Disney's new animation CEO said she wants to bring 2D animation. But okay, you know, that, that's that's all just talk. Unless there's actually... I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, I'll believe it when they actually have a trailer that is going to be legit done in 2D animation. Up until that point, they're just doing talk talk. Because prior to that, people said, oh, there's a possibility that they made big 2D animation back. Or they're going to do this, and they're going to do that. And then it's changed at the last minute. It's sorry for the tyrant here. Um, if you remember, there was a project called Scoob, which was supposed to be like an expanded universe redoing of the Hanna-Barbera world. You know, like there's them, there's the Jetsons and Flintstones, and they were going to try yeah. to go with the 2D animation style. Um, they went to CG after that. Uh, there was going to be a project yeah. from DreamWorks where there was a character meeting his shadow and his shadow was going to be 2D animated. That was canceled. Yeah. So when they say... When they're literally saying, you know, oh, there's a possibility they may bring 2D back, I'm just like, okay, there's only so much I could take with a pinch of salt. I'm not going to believe it a, until they legit show me what they're working on. Like you got to prove it to me. Wasn't there also like a GoFundMe film called like Hullabaloo or something like that that was supposed to be completely 2D and like very, uh, not cyber, uh, steampunk themed. And it was like, it had a bunch of Disney animators who used to work on the 2D animations and stuff. I haven't heard anything about it in like years now. Hmm. It, it looks so good too, and I'm wondering, did that like ever go anywhere, or was that like they took the money and ran type? Of I don't know. I don't remember that there was going to be a uh, Dragon's Lair um, uh, donation project, and that went to shit. Oh yeah, that failed. I Wait, no, actually, I think I heard that he is still working on that. I, I do hope, like, like Don Bluth, he's in his 80s now. Like, the dude's, man, the dude's like, what, 82 years old now? Something yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, um, 
I do hope that even in his age, he's still able to get something done. Like, if he passes on, he passes on. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how they're going to make the Dragon Slayer movie. And we have a we have a white alicorn. Hi. We're in the Q&A. What are you talking about? We're on the hey, Q&A. Bliss. Yes. What are you talking about? Two D um, animation. Yeah, no, because uh, uh, I've been given an article saying that oh, Disney may bring two D animation back. I'm not going to believe it unless I see a trailer of a two D animated movie. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's just you talk. Know about this. Well, I mean, have you all ever talked about the the Spider Man Spider Verse Ultimate movie? Spider Verse Ultimate. Yeah, the last is. one that came out. I think she means uh, Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, that yeah. one. Into the Spider-Verse is more of a stylish 3D movie. It's not hand-drawn. Ah, oh, but on the contrary, my good sir, the base is 3D, but with animation aspects on top of it, 2D. It's actually a healthy combination of the two. Okay, I, I, right. okay that's, that's not the same thing. I've seen the works in progress of Moana and seen that they're first hand-drawn and then they're rendered in 3D. That's no, no, still... no, no. She, she means like they layer 2D animation on top of the 3D as... It, it has like this very like comic s look to it, and I, I I get what she means by it. I'm trying to say that it's a hybrid. Yeah, it's a healthy ah. combo of the two. Like they they had so many different styles in that film, and I love it so much just for like the visual presentation alone. It's something yeah, I a... like to see in theaters because 2D animation is still healthy within it. Yep. That was such a beautiful movie. It was. It, it was. It was definitely a very sim. It, it had the comic book style and symbolism and just all sorts of good stuff. And I love the music, good music choices. But my point is, is that if 2D animation doesn't fully come back, I like that it makes some kind of a comeback. It has been. And this been. was probably a step in the right direction. Yeah, no, it has been. Um, there's uh, the, the Peanuts movie. Um, when it came to animating those characters, their mouths were hand drawn. Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, was it uh, Blue Sky Studios? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I think Blue Sky did that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was, it, I loved how it stuck to the original <laughs> style from the comics, honestly. Hmm. I don't really care that there's a Simpsons movie going to be made, in all honesty. Yeah, no. The Simpsons is going on longer than I was born. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> 1989 is when it first premiered. Yeah, no, the series oh, is... Been... okay, never mind. I'm older than The Simpsons, barely, I, by I'm, three years. Yeah, I'm just older <laughs> by, like, one year. Damn, that th that show's been going on way too long. Just put it out of its misery already, Fox. <laughs> just put it... <laughs> it kind of sound like you were talking to yourself for a second. I mean, no, at I'm this point... Saying. They have enough episodes that they could keep it in syndication for, like, decades to come, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder what Matt Granny has to deal with. Ugh. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you see the new episode of South Park? No, I have not been up to date with South Park. I don't, I don't like South Park. I haven't been watching South Park for a couple of seasons now. I, I stopped watching when they had all the storylines and stuff. It just got really old, honestly. I just don't uh, care for that kind of humor. Oh, mm. somebody had to use that word. But it's making a lot of money, Golden. Like, Who, well, who said that? For what? In the chat. What's make, for what's making a lot of money? Uh, the Simpsons. Because it sells. That's, that's all the companies care about is what makes money. So it's what if it sells? So what it's if it sells? That doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. It's no. also Fox's like flagship show. They're not going to let it go anytime soon. Oh, oh somebody, somebody had to bring out that question. What are, yeah. your, what are your thoughts on the recent <laughs> review of The Wall by the Nostalgic Critic? It's utter garbage. It's not a review. Uh, I heard of this. It's not a review. It's not a review no. at all. You just have like, I you have this opening care. sequence of like, Doug Walker in a TV screen. Like, okay, is that going to be the actual review? Oh, we're doing songs back and forth. Ooh, ooh with some nice CG animation <laughs> by another channel that deserves more subscribers and all this yeah. other crap. It's like, dude, like, even if it's even being fully aware, you have Corey Taylor, who's the front man of Slipknot, and he's like, dude, I didn't even get one line. Oh, yeah, it was a good movie. It's like, no, go into a much more in-depth discussion about it and not go through this random musical and expect me to follow along with it. I am so glad that the freaking wall 
the Nostalgia Critics review of The Wall was so torn apart. Like, it's ranked as one of the worst albums. Like, it, it became an album. Really? Have you seen the ratio of likes to dislikes on that video? On I YouTube? can imagine it's several thumbs down. Oh, it's like, I think I'll double look it the up. amount of thumbs down. I'm just going to go look. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm actually... I'm actually curious now. Okay, if you're it's going, nothing... yeah, no. If if you if you want to make a musical project, make a musical project that tells a story. If you're gonna make a review, make a review. I'll give you credit for being ambitious, but when it comes to reviews, get straight to the point on what you're talking about. Don't... Oh, oh boy. Yeah, What's the ratio? It. What's What's the damage control? Okay. What is it? Sixteen thousand likes. Gerbil. <laughs> Thirty-five thousand dislikes. Damn, that's so. Ooh. They have more than it's more half. Yeah, it's yeah. more than half. More than that, double. That's not that not good. No, no, no good. No good. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> however, mean, however, the... it's made over six hundred views. So at least he's still making money off it. I guess. Oh, it has to yeah. Come that. Uh, Riley, what did you post in the chat now? But no, no, no. Uh, See, that's my point to whoever said, but Golden is still making money. Well, that I doesn't don't make it good. Care. Hence, hence my point right here with the Nostalgia Critics video of The Wall. It is clearly not good based on the like dislike ratio, and yet it has over 600,000 views because people watched it and found out that, oh, we're disappointed in it. But because they watched it, that means they watched the ads. Ads pay for the video. The video's making money. You Does know, that mean it's... You know what I did? Don't make money, though. Yeah, you know what I did? I, like, I saw, like, a chunk of it, and I'm just like, are they going to do this the whole time? Let me skim through it and get to the actual review. And then I just, like, skip over. Um, 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 and then finally, like, I didn't even get one line. It's like, wait, so the entire quote-unquote video was a musical? I... Hi, like wow! Like hi. I just skimmed over it. I don't think I let all the well, ads play. I just he like has I'm... done. He has done musical reviews in the past, and they've. I've honestly liked them, like the Moulin Rouge review, and uh, was it late mid? Okay, I, I like I've seen reviews. the Moulin Rouge review. He actually reviewed the movie. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that's the same thing. I'm just saying he has made like musical reviews in the past, and yeah, but yeah, the whole. I, I, I couldn't sit through that. Like, the only part I keep watching is just Fena's animation from it, because that's, like, the best part of the entire review. I will give you that. The Fena animation, like, <sighs> the creepy-looking designs and everything, it definitely has its charm. Oh, yeah, I love the I love the designs that she I will give you that, with. but the, the freaking wall review, and as I put those in quotes, that video, that video can go jump in a fire. Yep. It's garbage. Eh, giddy buggy. Wow, I completely wore myself out from that. From but yeah, now everybody knows. You went how on feel. quite a tangent, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, me and I, I can tell you right now, me and Aop try to watch five to ten minutes of that video, and then I kind of just looked at him and, and said, "I'm bored." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. I, I was bored and I was confused. I'm like, wait, is this a review? <laughs> and he's like, I don't. It says nostalgia critic reviews the wall. It's I'm like, not yeah, a fucking but review. It's but not a review. Um, and they're, they're singing though. This is a musical. I feel like we were lied to. And he's like, "Yeah, you're right." I'm like, "I'm bored." Yeah, me too. We switched it to Markiplier. <laughs> <laughs> That's something much more entertaining. Watching him, especially when he's flipping out over getting over it with Benefati. How many? How many mice did he break? Too many. E yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. I guess he, I hope he doesn't pay for them. I, I mean, I guess when you 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 break it, you buy it, sort. Unless he does have to pay for it. So, Blissy, what's been your most favorite project that you worked on? Oh, is that part of the stream? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Q and A oh, time. Oh. Yeah, this what's is been? this is the podcast. Oh, okay. Um, crap. Uh, I'm on the spot now. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, you have to say something, the small Lissy. Little say, just something. Like, say something. Say <laughs> something. I don't know. Every project, it feels like I liked every project I worked on, and then the next one's even better than the last. Does that Ooh, make any that's sense? That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, okay. It, I, I, I mean, I can understand I, that. obviously, I look back at my old work and I cringe. 
Same. <laughs> Super yeah. hard, but I think I, I preach it to the choir when I say that. Yeah. I still have a little uh, bit of that. Like, I, I look back at my Magic Sheep review, which is one of the most, like, proud projects that I've made. And there's mm -hmm. parts in which I could definitely use an improvement on. I don't think anybody is usually 100% happy with their videos, honestly. <laughs> but... Every like video creator I hear says that their their favorite work is usually like their latest work. Basically, yeah, the, the latest work I released today, I I'm super 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 happy with it, and it's probably the most emotional piece I ever worked on. Oh next yeah, to the, probably more emotional than my Thunderblight series. And I I gotta say, it wasn't originally started out like that. Originally, I wanted it to be another funny magic lesson. But because it hit some personal topics Doc had for it, um, I rolled with it. So a lot of the yeah. emotional stuff came from him. And then I kind of realized something about that episode. You want to know something I realized about it? What? 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 I might as well almost have died. <laughs> Oof. Think about it. Yeah, that is scary. Bliss is a baby and no one can change her back. I might as well be dead. <laughs> that... that Oof! Mm. I'm a P I am a PG-13 child family friendly channel, guys. Apparently, Rosaria is asking a question about. Oh, uh, let's see. Can I create your OC from an MLP pony toy? Uh, you wouldn't be the first. Yeah. Then go right ahead. Let's see. Uh, here's an interesting question. Would you rather be in Predator or have a Predator as a pet? <laughs> I want a Predator as a pet. Same uh, man. I wouldn't be a pet. He'd be like a bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He'd be oh, my if bouncer, I had him man. As a bodyguard, does that mean Solar and Juggle can finally have a break? <laughs> <laughs> now they just start fighting the predator for the honor of being here. <laughs> 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 oh no! That does not sound far off. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not even a fair fight. Solar needs to load up. <laughs> See, to be corny. Oh, the, the text fade. I gotta look at the chat. It's oh no, I closed it. Son of a. God damn it, Golden. To I have be one job. corny, you have to be my favorite reviewer even more than Mr. Golden Blaze. Likes to wear pretty pink bows, Phoenix. Oh, <laughs> very funny. Okay, that's not a, that's not a question. Oh. And don't compare me to Golden Fox. Ooh. I admire Golden what? Fox for his articulate ability to We're express night and his day. opinions and reviews. Okay, here's a better way to put it. Um, Bliss likes to be PG-13 with her content. I mostly am on the edge of being R-rated almost all the time. Your dad yeah. doesn't have sex. No, but do, your dad <laughs> Do you not hear what I say that makes me jealous about your work? I'm the one suffering demonetization signs. Like, my recent video got a demonetization sign. I'm like, ah! Right, but you, you, you know why I'm jealous of you, don't you? Because of my editing skills? Well, I got editing skills, too. Our editing skills just are a little different. No, I'm jealous of your ability to articulate your opinion. Trust me, those oh. are not easy to do. No, you do it a hell of a lot better than me. <laughs> yeah. I don't do it like you, you feel. I feel like you put in a lot of research. And you 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 think about what you're saying. You you know what you're saying. Oh, you make EG, points, are you, you just facts. digging yourself a grave? I freaking suck at doing that, and I'm like, how does he do it? I don't think I have the because I'm ADD or something. Because I my style of reviewing. It's based off my opinion of how did this episode make me feel? Did it remind me of some memories? Did it entertain me? One of those, or one of, all the above. Well, no, Golden doesn't like... do that though. Golden does a more smart, factual, picks it apart. I wish I could do that. How do you do that? Teach me your ways. <laughs> <laughs> And then Golden looked down and said no. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, E.G. is digging his own grave. Bliss, who's the most powerful baby <laughs> alicorn, you or Flurry Heart? Uh, how about, I mean, how about no? I mean, the stuff that happened in my, in my channel does not dictate, does not dictate, bleh. The, what happened in my channel does that dictate the realms of Equestria, so for all I know, Flurry Heart is stronger. I don't know. I she don't was know. nerfed, though. <laughs> she know. was nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> is Golden the best stallion, or is it Finn the pony? 
Why are we comparing? Why are I'm we not going to compare myself to the cinnamon roll. I don't want anybody happening to him. I it's don't like want anything happening. It's Go like me comparing myself to, to Keyframe or to Mad Munchkin. You don't do that. Yeah, we're, we're all different in, its, in each other. <laughs> oh. Teach different me how taste. to review a oh, great master golden. Teach you I shall not. Teach yourself. You must. Yeah, no, I taught myself how to review. <laughs> Guys, it's just sharing your opinions and learning to articulate your words. It also applies to your social cues and how you make it, um, you know, fluent to what people are watching. Well, I'm doomed. <laughs> Says the one who has twice the amount of subs compared to me. It's because I'm a cute factor and I edit. Yeah. Okay, I guess. That's, that's all it is. Nobody watches my content to hear what I have to say. Uh, people are asking her thoughts about the recent episode. The Big Mac question. I liked it. I loved it. <laughs> Bliss didn't see it. No! Oh, okay. Thoughts about the recent MLP episode? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've yes. seen I've seen I've seen I've seen everything. I even know how it ends. I'm sorry. I'm not going to spoil anything. Everything. Dude, same. I yeah. see trees. I've, I've had of to live I had to suffer in silence of the re of the episode ending of season 9 ending. I had to Aww. suffer in silence. That's my own fault. But Meanwhile, I'm trying to suffer I... avoiding spoilers. Same. Thank well, you, do not companies spoil who released it. Yeah, thank com thank you, companies who decided to re release it early for no reason. May the force be with you. <laughs> or no, thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> thanks, Pink Diamond. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's go for maybe one more question, and then we'll bring a closure. All right. That is, if there is any question. Is there any question? <laughs> Somebody spelled keyframe wrong. That's pretty funny. Uh, from you, know, you know how many times I've seen people spell bliss wrong? It would be blitz, blitzer, <laughs> blessy. <laughs> So if you hang Betsy, out with Bessie, Blessy, Bitsy, Blitzy, it's Bliss. Blissy. B L I S S. If you hang out with Aeon and, my, and I, does that make you lightning blitzed? <laughs> God damn it! Might as well just you know relate that to NFL. Da 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 uh, yeah, you'll like the corner. Aeon has fun there all the time. Okay, here's... Okay, finally a question. Would you rather <laughs> read the comics for this season or just watch Golden Play Tetris? Um, I'll watch Golden Play Tetris. <laughs> Oof. I had a feeling somebody was going to ask me about, um... Like about the comics itself, like I like even like I know that there's like a season ten comic series. I'm still not going to bother with it. That 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 that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've never been a. F I right? like. Okay, I'll tell you this much. It's nice that we see comics. You know that there's comics of any show out there, whether it be Ducktales or Adventure Time <laughs> or you know any particular show. What I don't like is when people use it at heart as what is you know particularly canon and such saying oh comics said this or comics said that it drives me nuts because that implies uh. that you have to spend the extra effort time and money to take a look at it to me that is a bad marketing strategy. yeah the comics have a different canon as opposed to the show yeah like yeah. somebody actually like somebody spent the effort of messaging me privately about the iteration of sombra in the season nine opener compared to what yeah, the comics yeah. did and I'm glad that there are differences because that shows don't rely on external resources. This yeah. Is, this is also yeah. kind of the reason why I don't take as, <coughs> you know, as big of an issue with the recent Star Wars movies because of the whole expanded universe thing. Like, you know, this just proves my point more. This is why I don't rely on external resources. They're a nice bonus to have, but don't take it at heart. Yeah. 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 If you have to, you, if you have to look over another media to understand a story you're doing something wrong. That's something nobody should have to spend the effort doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end that there. And I, I think I've pretty much said my share on everything. So um, just think of it as an alternative universe. Yeah, easier said than done. I, I At this point, you know, uh, anybody who is still uh, sticking around, thank you for listening in. <sighs> 
I just hope that there's no more awkwardness going on because I really don't want there to be. <laughs> what do you mean? Because like there's been some like awkward moments throughout like each podcast. Like it, it's funny it, it's funny to you know make jokes about it. But people make joke like had this ongoing theme of like, oh, do you think this is the new awkward podcast? I'm like, no, I'm not trying to upstage A and Y and Keyframe. I'm just doing my own thing. I mean, it's an easy joke to make. It's low and hanging they do fruit. They blood jacket hookers. <laughs> no, I'm <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> it's bliss. I am surprised at you. <laughs> Why are you surprised? You know who I hang out with. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Never mind. All right. I mean, if you want to turn this into a po- to a, something bigger of a podcast one day, obviously do it, but do it in your own way, and which you are, so I don't see what the problem is. Yeah. The podcasts are go- coming out great, bro. There's a okay. buttload of po- podcasts. Though. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah speaking of, and speaking of podcasts, I think it's time to go to the post show. So for anybody watching on YouTube, I definitely I will have a uh, post show posted on my second channel. Anybody watching on Twitch, well... Stay tuned as we're about to move into uh, the post show. And last but not least, thank you all for listening in. And hopefully we'll find a more interesting uh, podcast in the next two to three weeks. Yeah, um, I'm going to choose a day that's like the last Friday of October to talk more about Halloween. So until then, I hope you guys, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Later. (laughs) 